Hi pupils, this is Teacher Edward. Welcome back. Yes, today I want us to continue the subject that is science. So you are looking at animals. I want us to summarize the characteristics of vertebrates. Remember, we have addressed the four groups of vertebrates. Today I want us to look at the last one. Last time we looked at mammals. We talked about the characteristics of birds. We talked about the characteristics of reptiles. Then we looked at the characteristics of fish. Today I want us to sum up that group of vertebrates. And the last group is amphibians. So I want us to look at the characteristics of amphibians. And I know by the end of this, you'll be able to give me some examples of those amphibians. So welcome, as we address each characteristic. So characteristic number one, remember we have addressed the others. The first one was mammals. We say that mammals are warm, or they are warm-blooded animals. We talked about birds, they are also warm-blooded animals. We talked about reptiles, we say that they are cold-blooded. We talked about fish, we say that they are cold-blooded. For amphibians, they are also cold. So in the group of vertebrates, two are warm, three are cold. The warm ones are the mammals and the bats. The others, fish, reptiles, and amphibians, they are cold-blooded. By now, I know you know the meaning of that. We said that when you hear that an animal is warm-blooded, it means that their body temperature does not change. When it is hot, their body temperature remains the same. When it is too cold, their body temperature remains the same. When it comes to cold blooded animals, when it is hot, their body temperature increases. And when it is cold, their body temperature decreases. And when it is cold, they become inactive. When it is hot, they become active. So that is what happens to the amphibians here? They are cold-blooded. It means that their body temperature changes with that of their surrounding. Good. That is characteristic number one. Characteristic number two, they have a moist skin. They have a moist skin without scales. So for amphibians, they don't have scales. So we have some groups of animals or vertebrates that have scales. One of them, and we have talked about them, are reptiles. The other one is fish, and also birds. Their feet are covered with scales. So the feet of birds or the feet of birds are covered with scales. So those three groups have scales. That is the feet of birds, reptiles, and the fish. But for amphibians, they don't have scales. They don't have scales. Their body is moist. So they have moist skin, but they don't have scales. So that is another characteristic. Then another one, they lay eggs in water, just like birds, like reptiles and fish, they lay eggs. But these ones, they lay eggs in water, just like fish. So they lay eggs, they reproduce by means of laying eggs. And their eggs are externally fertilized. Their eggs are fertilized after rain. So after rain, that is when their eggs are said to be fertilized. And in science, we say that fertilization is a union or fusion of the male and the female sex cells. So the male and this, the female sex cells of amphibians unite when they are out of the bodies of the male and the female amphibians. So the male or the female lays egg, eggs in water, and then the male lays eggs in water, and the two different sex cells, that is from the male and the female, they fuse when out of the body of the the amphibian. That is why we say that they are externally fertilized. So look at the pictures that I'm showing you. Those are the, some of the examples of the male 
and the female eggs of an amphibian. Yes, once they fuse, we say that fertilization has taken place. Yes, and after that, they hatch into the young ones of an amphibian. Yes, I know you know the names given to the young ones of an amphibian. Yes, try, try and think, try and give out the name given to the young one of an amphibian. Good. So the young ones of amphibians are known as tadpoles. Yes, they look like this. Those are tadpoles. They live in water and they breathe through gills. When they are young, they breathe through gills. We say that when you're talking about fish, gills helps those animals or fish to take oxygen that is in water. So the same case happens to tadpoles, the young ones of amphibians. They breathe through gills. Good. When they mature, they start breathing in using their lungs, just like mammals, birds, and the reptiles. So they breathe through their lungs when they mature. Some of them, sometimes they hide in the soil. They hibernate in the soil. When they are in the soil, they breathe through their skin, their moist skin. So sometimes they hibernate in the soil. They hide themselves in the soil and they breathe through their moist skin. So don't forget about that. Amphibians, when they are young, they live in water and they breathe through gills, good. Then when they mature, they start breathing through their lungs. Sometimes they hide in the soil or they live in the soil for a certain period of time where they breathe through their moist skin. So don't forget about that. Sometimes it can be asked as a question. It's good to know what to say. So from there, Characteristic number four, they live partly in water and partly on land. So we have said sometimes they live in water and sometimes they live on land. So it is very possible to find some of these amphibians in water and sometimes you find them on land. So that, those are some of the characteristics of amphibians. So from here, I know can easily give me some examples of those amphibians that you have. Yes? A good, I've heard some of you mentioning some of those examples. So a good example, I've already mentioned it, is a frog. A frog is a good example of an amphibian. A frog is a good example. Yes, that is a frog. Yes, that is a frog. Good. Another good example is a toad. Yes, a toad. Yes, that is a toad. Mostly a toad is on land. It looks similar to a frog, but a frog mostly lives in water. That is another example of uh, an amphibian, a newt. Yes, look at the picture on your screen. Yes, that is a newt. Then the other one is a salamander. A salamander. Salamander is another good example of an amphibian. Yes, the one that you're seeing there on your screen is a salamander. Good. Those are the examples of amphibians. And I want to write down for you so that you can copy the names. Make sure you copy them neatly. Good. From there, I want us to sum up 
this section by watching the video. So this video has some examples of amphibians. Watch it, watch, and as usual, be very keen to spot some of the things that we have addressed. Look at their characteristics. Good, enjoy the video. Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at a truly amazing group of vertebrates. When they're born, they usually live in water, but when they grow up and become adults, they spend most of their time on land. We present the amphibians. All amphibians have some common characteristics that you should know about so you can recognize and differentiate them. Amphibians have thin, bare skin with no hairs and scales to protect them. Most have four legs and a membrane between their toes that allows them to move much better in the water. Amphibians are oviparous but they don't incubate their eggs after laying them. They abandon them and don't care for their young. Not very good parents, huh? When they hatch, they're small larvae and live in water. Slowly, very slowly, their bodies go through a process called metamorphosis. During this process, the body of the amphibian changes. Their front and rear legs, their limbs grow and their heads and their bodies develop, so they finally look like their parents. In the early stages of their lives, amphibians breathe through gills. But when they grow up and become adults, they breathe with their lungs. The problem is, their lungs are very small and cannot get all the oxygen they need to live. But nature is very clever and has solved this problem by allowing them to breathe and get the oxygen they need through their skin. That's why they need to be near water to keep their skin wet. In the early stages of their life, some amphibians are herbivores, but when they grow up, most become carnivores. So they need to hunt. Some have a long, sticky tongue they shoot out to capture prey. Aren't amphibians fascinating and also a bit strange? So let's remember the most important characteristics. Amphibians are vertebrates. They're oviparous. In the early stages of their life, they live in water as larvae. But slowly they change until they look like their parents. This process of change is called metamorphosis. Amphibians are carnivores, so they have to hunt to eat. They have thin, smooth skin and breathe through their skin and with their lungs. Amphibians are so interesting, aren't they? Goodbye for now, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching that video. So I want us to continue with the next part so that we can summarize this topic or this subtopic on classification of animals. So the next part, after looking at the groups of vertebrates, remember we said that animals are classified into two, that is vertebrates and invertebrates. And you say that vertebrates are animals with a backbone, and vertebrates are animals without a backbone. Then we have given out the characteristics of each group of vertebrates. 
and I hope you can call all those characteristics and examples of those groups of vertebrates. So from here, I want us to move on to the next part. Just look at some of the examples of invertebrates. Remember, invertebrates are animals without a backbone. These are animals without a backbone. So we have some common invertebrates. So that is what I want us to deal with. So just give out some examples. I know you know some of their characteristics and so on. As we give out examples, we try and give out some characteristics of some of these invertebrates. So the first group of invertebrates that we are supposed to talk about are known, or it's known as insects. So one of the common invertebrates that we have are the insects. So we have the insects. And before you give out the examples, can try and tell me some of the characteristics of insects that you know. Yes. Good. I have heard some of you talking about those characteristics. So we have many of them, but just to mention a few, one of them is that they have three body parts. They have three body parts. So look at the picture of an insect that I'm showing you on your screen. Yes, those are the three body parts. We have the head, we have the thorax, and then we have the abdomen. Those are the three parts of an insect. So all insects have three body parts. The other one is that they have six legs. They have six legs. In other words, they have three pairs of legs. They have three pairs of legs. So as you can see on the image on your screen, that insect has six legs or three pairs of legs. Good. Another characteristic of insects, they have antennas. They have antennas. In other words, or in other, another name of those antennas, they are also known as feelers. Antennas are also known as feelers. So insects have feelers. Another characteristic is that some insects have wings, but a few don't. So you have some insects with wings and others don't. So those are some of the few characteristics. And maybe to add another one, insects breathe through spiracles. Insects breathe through spiracles. Insects breathe through spiracles. Look at the picture that I'm showing you. These spiracles are located, yes, that is where they are located, in their abdomen. They are located in their abdomen. So they have some pores in their abdomen, and those pores are the ones that allows air to get in or out of an insect. They are known as spiracles. Yes, so from those few characteristics, I know that you can be able to give out some examples of insects. That's good. So we have butterflies. Yes, that is a butterfly that you are seeing on your screen. We have house flies. You all know them. House flies. Yes, mostly you find them in those dirty places. If you live in a very dirty environment, those will be your friends can easily spread diseases and germs. So ensure that you live in a very clean environment. The other one is bees. Yes, bees, nuki. Bees are also insects. They have three body parts. They have six legs and so on. These bees are very important in our life. They help in a process known as pollination. For those who are in class six, seven, and eight knows what I'm talking about. They are agents of pollination. They also help us in making of something very sweet known as honey. Yes, bees are very important. So as you can see on your screen, I'm showing a bee or bees. Then we have freeze. We have freeze. Freeze are also examples of insects. We've got to your screen. Yes, we have mosquitoes. Yes, 
mosquitoes are known by everyone. They spread a disease known as malaria, which is also very dangerous. Yes, and protect ourselves against that disease. You are supposed to ensure that you sleep under treated mosquito nets. So mosquitoes are also examples of insects. So we have many other examples. After this, make sure you add several. Then, another common invertebrate is worms. Or worm. So we have worms. Worms are number two. Yes. So examples of worms, we have tapeworms, earthworms, and many other types of worms. So worms are also invertebrates. Number three, we have another group of invertebrates known as arachnids. Yes, that is another group of invertebrates. So arachnids, they have several characteristics. One of them, they have jointed legs. Their legs are jointed. The difference between them and insects is that they have two body parts, whereas the insects have three body parts. So these ones have two body parts. Another one is that they have eight legs. They have eight legs. Yes, they have eight legs. Uh, that is, or it means that they have four pairs of legs. That is a bit different from what we know when it comes to insects. Insects have six legs, but these ones, they have eight. So from there, I know you can be able to give me a few examples of arachnids. Yes, a good one, a very common example that you can easily find everywhere is a spider. So we have a spider. They have two body parts and eight legs. Then we have ticks. These ones mostly attack our livestock, ticks. We also have mites and many others, and many others. So from there, number four, another group of invertebrates. We call it, or we call them morasts. Morasts. These are animals with soft bodies. Yes, we have two good examples of animals with soft bodies that are known as morasks. And that is a snail and a slug. A snail and a slug. As you can see on your screen, that is a snail. Yes, a snail has a shell. Yes, they are almost similar, but a snail has a shell. And a slug does not have a shell. Yes, good. Those are two good examples of morasks or animals with soft bodies. Then the last group that I address today, the last group of invertebrates that we talk about today is centipedes and millipedes. Yes, those two are also invertebrates. A side difference between them is that a millipede has more legs than a centipede. The other one is that a centipede is a carnivore and a millipede is a herbivore. I know you know the difference between the two terms. We say that carnivores feed on fresh, whereas herbivores feed on plants. So that means that carnivores or centipedes feed on small animals and Millipedes feed on plants. So that is a slight difference between the two, but they are also invertebrates. So from there, that is the end of our class. And until next time, I wish you the best. Goodbye. Show me the picture of the ant. I want to count the number of its legs. Hmm, here it is. Come on, friends. Let's see how many legs an ant has. Let's count. One, two, three, four, four five, five, and, and six. six. Wow, six legs. Yes, all insects have six legs, and their body is divided into three parts. Let me see again. See, its body is divided into three parts. 
Yeah, and all legs are joined to one part only. Yeah, this part is known as the thorax. What are the names of the other two parts? Oh, they are known as the head and the abdomen. Hmm, so it has a head. It has a thorax. And lower part in an insect is called abdomen. But what are these? These are antennas. Insects smell things with help of antenna. So all insects do not have nose? Yeah! Can you show me the picture of the butterfly now? Here it is! And did you know that the butterfly is also an insect? Hmm, it also has six legs. And see guys, it also has an antenna. Yeah, and friends, can you see the three parts of its body? These are the head, thorax, and antenna. But it also has wings. Ants did not have wings. You are right. Few insects have wings, but some do not. Let me show you one more bug. Hmm. Do you know its name? I think... Hmm. Friends, do you know the name of this bug? Yeah! Hmm. It is a spider. Count how many legs it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight legs. And how many body parts? Oh, it only has two body parts. Yeah, its head and thorax is combined. It is known as cephalothorax. And it too has an abdomen. So it is different than the ant and the butterfly? Yeah, bugs are of two types, insects and arachnids. Look here. Arachnids? Yeah, bugs having eight legs are known as arachnids. Some people call them spiders, but apart from spiders, scorpions and ticks also have eight legs. Hmm, and insects have three body parts, whereas arachnids have only two body parts. One more difference. Most of the insects have wings, but none of the arachnids have wings. And insects have an antenna, but spiders do not have an antenna. I have an idea. What is that? Let's go to the garden and learn more about the bugs. That's a great idea. Come on, friends. Let's see more bugs. Oh, I like this hat. I look like an insect as the hat as an antenna. And I look like an arachnid as I don't have any antenna over my head. So I am a spider woman today. See? See? There's a bug here. Yeah. Yeah, can you tell whether it is an insect or an arachnid? Hmm, let my friends also see it. Oh, you're right. It has got wings and antenna. It is an insect. And also count the legs. Yeah, friends, let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, it is an insect. Let's go further and find more. Oh, a spider web! Count the legs! Oh, it has eight legs and no wings. It is an arachnid. Okay, time to move on. Oh, see a butterfly is sitting on your shoulder. Hmm, tell me whether it is an insect or an arachnid. Oh, it has got wings. It has antenna, so it is an insect. Very good. That is all for today's lesson. Let's go home now.